News article. Bizarre serial killings in Ueno. Crisis solved. I kind of doubt that. On the night of February 10th, an investigator from the Ueno police station, acting on a tip, discovered multiple dismembered corpses in the chapel attached to a Kayo private academy. A teacher at the academy, 27-year-old Fukamizu Kaoru, was arrested under the suspicion of homicide and abandoning corpses. From the appearance of the corpses, there's a chance that the suspect may be involved in the bizarre serial murder case. The Ueno police are frantically trying to get to the bottom of the matter. February 13th. Three days after that horrible night, I'm finally discharged from the hospital, covered head to toe in bandages. I've got bruises all over, what's more, I sustained a deep wound from taking a hatchet to the left shoulder. It can't exactly be written off as a light injury. But since I couldn't stand being coped up in that boring hospital room for days on end, I forced them to discharge me. Ah, shit! Waves of throbbing pain clamp down on me. The pain radiates out from the side of my head to where that nun clocked me pretty hard. Disgusted, I unravel the bandages around my forehead and toss them onto the ground. The doctors exa ex examined me and found no abnormalities with my head. However, the intermittent headaches plaguing me don't appear to be ending anytime soon. Damn, it's cold. My exhalation sent up puffs of white as I crane my head to look upward at the skies above Ueno. It's covered in grey clouds. The sight alone is enough to make one's spirit sink. And when I arrive in front of the Yukishiro... Hatsune is waiting for me under the cold winter sky. Hey, uh, Hatsune. Come on now, you shouldn't be standing around outside when it's so chilly out. Nah, you don't have to do that for me. She's so thoughtful. Her expression is intense, she's dead serious. Alright, alright. I reluctantly assent. She really is worried about me. I can't just shunt aside those feelings of hers. Thanks, then. Yes. Hatsune slowly takes the luggage from me. Let's get going, shall we? However, she remains unmoving, her face downcast, still clutching my things to her chest. Hatsune? In a soft whisper, she says, she averts her eyes downward once more. Hatsune, I'm really sorry for making you worry. I use my uninjured hand to pet Hatsune on the head. I won't do anything crazy from now on, I promise. But will he really be able to keep that promise? Hmm. Hi. She bobs her head in agreement and leads the way into the Hyukishiro. A promise, eh? I, of all people, know perfectly well that those words were nothing but a white lie. At last we reach my room, Hatsune having carried my things all the way here. Thanks, Hatsune. This will do for now. She gives me a curt bow. Nah, I haven't been back here for a while. I'll just take it easy for a little bit. She then bows again more politely and vanishes down the hallway. And to the moment I slide open the door to my room. Oh, cousin Antoji are here. I discover Cousin Antoji waiting inside. Apparently, the moment Cousin A heard I was being discharged from the hospital, she ditched theater rehearsal and came here. She also ended up dragging the unsociable Toji along with her. 
I'm sorry, Kazuna. Eh, hi. Shugo-san, what are you doing suddenly? Uh, well, even though I was facing a crisis, I said some harsh things to Kazuna at that time. My actions ate away at me during my stay in the hospital. You saved my life back there. Oh, yeah. So no mess up, no I just. She waves her hands around in a panic. Well, you've got a point there. The reckless comet irks me a bit, but I'm vulnerable right now. I'll just go ahead and ignore that. She's starting to fidget and get embarrassed. Kazuna is not the sort of girl who can keep her emotions bottled inside. Anyhow, thank you, Kazuna. <laughs> Kazuna nods happily. And then, after a lengthy chat, Kazuna tells us she needs to return to the theater to rehearse. <sighs> Wow, you're pretty busy, huh? She waves her hand at us spunkily and leaves the room. Toji then proceeds to stand up. Sure, you should accompany Kazuna back. Toji turns around to look at me as she is about to leave. That other matter? Other matter? That's what she leaves me with. My room is strangely silent after both ladies have departed. It's been a few days since I've been back here. I flopped down onto the tatami. If I close my eyes, I can hear the hustle and bustle coming in from the street outside. The noise that I've gotten used to over this past year. None of us ended up uh, mentioning Aline in our chat. We just couldn't find it in ourselves to bring her up. Someone knocks on the door while I'm dozing on the tatami. I sit up and call toward the sliding door. Come on in. Madam Ujaku shows herself inside. Ah, madam. I quickly adjust my posture and bow my head toward her. I apologize. I should have gone to see you. You didn't have to come here and... The madam then takes a seat across from me. I guess, but the funeral services for Arin and Utoa had been conducted the day before yesterday. I wasn't able to attend due to being hospitalized. I sneak a peek at her face. I'm not surprised at what I see. The madam looks absolutely exhausted. She suddenly breaks the silence. Yeah. The weather hasn't been clearing up. It's really been bringing everyone down, huh? She points toward my left shoulder with her pipe. Uh, who knows? The doctor said it would take a while. I suppose I got what I deserved. I allow myself a derisory chuckle. Huh? I wouldn't mind that. Well, if she wants to do that, I mean, I, I, um, well, I thank her for her kindness, or as Ujaku to do is what? Ask Ujaku to do it instead. No, let's thank her for her kindness. I accept the madam's favor without protest. That would be a great help. I feel bad for Hatsune, but I'd appreciate her assistance all the time. I see. 
Sometime during our conversation, I realized that the sun's already begun to set. She stands up and slides open the door. Uh, madam. Uh, I hesitate. There's something I was unable to bring myself to say to her when she visited me at the hospital two days ago. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry I wasn't able to save Rin. I keep my eyes downcast, unable to look the madam in her face. If only I had been a little faster. Well, no matter how much I pour my heart into them, in the end my words are nothing but cheap excuses. When I raise my head, she's looking at me with a sad smile on her face. Madam, it looks like she's suddenly struck by an idea. Sure. Visiting Arin's grave. I was planning on going by myself anyway. This is a good opportunity. Yes, of course I will. After Madame Ujako leaves, I sit there vacantly, staring at the scenery outside my window. My mind is blank. I kill time by doing nothing at all. Night descends upon the city. I step out from the Yukishiro's front entrance. It's time for a stroll. It's being opened back up for business starting tonight. However, I don't see the usual raucous crowds. Rumors have probably gone around about the two prostitutes who were murdered. I stop under a street lamp and light up a cigarette. Well then, it looks like the Uno murders have been solved for now, but the conclusion was something I would have never imagined even in my wildest dreams. However, there are still several questions left unanswered. Whoops, I skipped something. Fukamizu's true motives, why she left Ota's body in that state and... I sink de into deep thought, my mind churning away as I stare at the falling snow. Suddenly, someone addresses me from behind. Arishima-san. For the time being, I show Arishima-san into my room and have Hatsune bring us some tea. Hatsune leaves after placing teacups in front of us. I saw Arishima-san once while I was hospitalized, but we weren't really able to talk then. He listens carefully while I give him a detailed rundown of my injuries. Nah, I did nothing of the sort. His eyes crinkle in amusement after hearing me say that. <笑>やっぱりお前は良くがない男だな。感謝状も辞退して新聞に名前を出すのもことあった。うまく立ち回れば現代の名探偵とAUを扱いされただろうに。まあ、そのあたりがお前らしさなんだろうが。well, that's because I had the fact that Toji and I were involved in this hidden from the press. Toji was vehemently against having her name appear in, on the headlines. I'm not surprised, considering her profession. Of course, I also didn't want anything to do with the hordes of unscrupulous reporters swarming around for scraps. I'm just not that type of person. And besides, there is no way I could accept thank you cards when something that ghastly happened. It was truly a depressing event. Marine's body, along with the corpses of two other girls, were discovered inside that basement. The two girls had been treated as missing persons up until that point. Until their bodies were discovered, the authorities were unable to put a solid count on the number of people Fuka Mizu had murdered. The girls' lives were stolen from them unfairly, without any forewarning. If I could, I'd like to forget this all happened. Arishima-san narrows his eyes and scrutinizes me. No, I didn't say that. Well, I 
いろいろと分かったことがある。Is this really okay with you, Arishima san? I mean, telling me about it. 堅苦しいことを言うな。お前は今回の件では一番の功労者だろう。どうだ聞きたくないか Fukamizu's testimony. I'd be straight up lying if I said no. Sure, if you please. Arishima san then begins relaying to me the information they gleaned from interrogating the mass murderer Fukamizu Kaoru. Fukamizu Kaoru was unable to have children. Ten years ago, the new direct was happened. How did you get the first one? The first one was the first one. The first one was the first one. The first one was the first one. She wanted to get married and dreamed of someday making a happy family with her husband, but that's when crisis struck. To her, realizing her own mental image of happiness was more important than actually being in love and having a child. The illusion of happiness she built up inside of her shell. In order to protect that dream, she was faced with the task of finding a new image for herself. She might have been within the realm of salvation if she'd only been able to reach out to someone for help. However, her parents were apathetic to her plight, and her friends spurned her and called her creepy. Loneliness, despair, and alienation, the shell she built around herself kept her growing harder, and her mind steadily grew more warped. She wanted to live in a world where she had a loving family, where nobody could hurt her and everybody accepted her. That was the happiness she sought. So, go to Fukamizu got there, Tanoga. Kiristo Kyo that. To it, the more Kiristo Kyo no Kyogi Jitani Kyomi or Motta Kedeva Naidaro. Yatsuga Hikaratanoa. Yes, Tanjo no Sai no Yume Naitsua. Shojo Kaitaida. It was a holy miracle in which Mary became pregnant without having coupled with a man. Before long, she gave birth to the Son of God. She had received a sign from heaven. She believed that in order to give birth to a child while lacking a uterus, she would require a miracle from God. <laughs> She joined the Christian church and became a fervent soldier of the faith, and everyone around her showered her with praise. However, her mind gradually became twisted from ten years of praying for something that would never happen. The girls at the academy possessed the possibility of obtaining the happiness so unfairly stolen from her. Was it jealousy or perhaps envy? Regardless, the way she looked at her students was definitely not normal. Her first victim was a student who wasn't feeling well, Isaka Shizuko. Under the pretense of taking her home in the carriage, she instead imprisoned the girl in that cellar. Arishima san proceeds to give me a detailed rundown of Fukamizu Kaoru's testimony. Fukamizu was a victim of the crime of eating a victim, and he was able to save his crime and save his crime. He believed he could save the crime of the crime. That was a miracle. I can't believe she killed all those people over something so ridiculous. Arishima-san shrugs. No way to verify. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Ah, yesterday night. That's ridiculous! What the hell were her guards doing? Arishima san's face clouds over with a displeasure at my question. So, Okina Koyo Dasuna Shumo. Taiho Saradegarano Yatsuno Taidoa. Amarini Jujun Dattakarana. Tori Shiravenimo. 
スラスラと素直に応じていて正直油断していたよ留置用で倒れているやつを見つけた時には手遅れだった I can't believe this Fukamizu committing suicide is that really how this case is going to be closed with that unsatisfying conclusion can someone really die from biting his or her tongue is that really possible Arishima-san did、uh, Fukamizu admit to all the murders being her own work そうだな奴に死なれる前にそのあたりの供述は取れていたがそれがどうかしたのか Uta's murder too? That strange, bizarre corpse in Ueno Park. Something inside me tells me that it isn't、uh, Fukamizu's work. Ueno Koen no shitai ka? Ah, ichi o mitomete ita yo da ga na. But? Shoji ki ni yu to, sono atari no kyo jitsu wa, yatsu no sakuran ga hidokute, ima ichi likai deki nai bupun ga okute na. I see. I guess I have no choice but to choke it down. Even if I want to confirm the truth, the crucial piece of the puzzle, Fukamizu, has already been silenced for all eternity. Are you really satisfied with this, Arishima-san, closing the case like this? So, then. Kyokai's office has been found in the case of the case. There is also a case of the case. There is no case of the case. He shrugs and flashes me a wry smile. I see. I reluctantly nod in agreement. ところで修吾、例の洪水家の依頼はどうだ進展しているかアリシマさん、suddenly changes the subject.、Uh, I don't really know. Truth be told, I haven't done any work at all on, on, on it since Otoha's murder. I plan to pick up the search again starting tomorrow, in reality, though I have no idea how long it will take. そうか。いや、詮索するつもりはないんだがお前を先方に紹介した手前もある少々気になってな Yeah, I understand completely Right at that moment I thought pops into my head The incident from 10 years ago Arishima-san might know something about Yura's accident which Kiichiro refused to speak to me about However いや、光月氏は私にも詳しい事情は話してくれなかったよ。アリシマさん、promptly denies having any knowledge。I see。I do find it rather hard to believe that Kozuki Keichiro would just mouth off to someone about a personal crisis that could potentially upset his social standing。しかし、シュウ、どうしてそんなことを、uh, ?I was just a bit curious。I evade his question by making an ambitious remark. No matter how busy he may be, it's rather uncharacteristic of Arishima-san to not actually have all the details of a request on hand. Though, there's no way I can actually bring myself to say that to his face. After a short while, Arishima-san tells me he has some work left to do and departs for the Ueno police station. Now, alone in my room, I let my frazzled mind wander. But we'll do that next time on Katagra. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.